Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony. I'm one of the Socratic Med Tutors, and today I'll be going over the 28-day menstrual cycle. In this review, I'll make clear how the hormones vary throughout this cycle um, and how these hormones um, going up and down also fit into the uterine cycle and the ovarian cycle. Um, also, before I begin, I remember when I was studying for the MCAT, this one was hard for me to um, remember for a long period of time due to just a lot of different things going on. However, helping looking at this cycle in different parts does help to understand what is going on better. Um, and instead of just memorizing patterns and what's going on, um, this way you can help look at it intuitively and really understand the whole process. So first off, um, building upon that, um, it helps to remember that the rising and the falling of estrogen and progesterone really dictates the growth, development, and maintenance of the endometrium and thus controls the menstrual cycle. Um, so now I will move on and explain the menstrual cycle itself. So we start off the cycle in the follicular phase. This is day zero through day 14 of the cycle. Um, this is when we, days zero through seven. So the first half of it um, is in menses. So the shedding of the endometrium. Um, now talking about the hormones. So the hormone levels of um, estrogen and progesterone are low. Uh, the hypothalamus uh, recognizes this. So the estrogen and progesterone that's flowing through the bloodstream is low and the receptors on the hypothalamus aren't getting a lot of stimulation from these hormones. So the hypothalamus will then secrete GnRH, which is gonadotropin releasing hormone. Um, that will then signal to the anterior pituitary, which lives directly inferior to this uh, structure. And that will then secrete luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Um, so these are the anterior pituitary hormones you can see on the chart here. These hormones at the beginning of the stage start um, at low levels, but then as um, the cycle keeps moving, as GnRH is produced and then luteinizing hormones uh, FSH are being secreted, uh, their levels start to slowly increase. These two hormones, LH and FSH, work to grow the follicle. So you can see that in the ovarian cycle at the top. Um, the follicle will start growing. These granulosum cells um, will then start secreting estrogen. So you can see that in the ovarian hormone part. So the estrogen starts to decrease Estrogen has a negative feedback effect on luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. So what that means is that as more estrogen is being produced, uh, the hypothalamus is registering that there's more estrogen and it's then telling the anterior pituitary to secrete um, less luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. It's a way to check that there's not just a bunch going on. However, around day 12, um, from day 12 to day 14, there's this paradoxical effect where estrogen then has a positive feedback effect where estrogen levels reach a threshold. And this just happens to cause a spike in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. So you can see this around day 14. Um, this is important because the spike in luteinizing hormone causes the egg to be released from the follicle. At this point, the egg is a secondary oocyte, but at this point it is released. Um, and that's when ovulation occurs um, and the end of the follicular phase. Um, the next phase is the luteal phase. However, I'm going to back up a little bit. And before going into there, we're going to look a little bit at the uterine cycle. So what estrogen does, estrogen establishes the endometrium so the reason that menses is occurring throughout the first seven days is because there is a lack of estrogen um, and there's no hormone establishing this and it's being shed off. However, on day seven, there's 
more estrogen in the system um, and the endometrium can then be established. So then moving back on um, to the luteal phase, our follicle atrophies into what's called the uh, corpus luteum um, due to the high LH and FSH levels. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone. So you can see here looking at the ovarian hormones that progesterone levels are increasing. Progesterone has a negative feedback effect on gonadotropin releasing hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulation hormone. Uh, therefore, the levels of these three hormones begin to drop. However, progesterone is high. So now we see the endometrium, you know, is getting bigger. What it's actually doing, it's getting more vascular. Um, it's secreting nutrients. Um, and this is all for the fertilized egg, which could potentially happen to implant on the endometrium and have a um, allow for it to have a home. Um, so whereas the where estrogen establishes the endometrium, progesterone maintains the endometrium. Um, in the uterine cycle, um, we have at this point, um, we have a lack of stimulation by LH because it is now decreasing. And now that's what causes the corpus luteum to um, form, right? So now the corpus luteum is going to atrophy. Now, estrogen and progesterone won't be secreted anymore, um, and these levels will fall. Now, the um, the you the endometrium lining will now shed because of the lack of estrogen there and progesterone. Um, and at this point, all levels of these hormones are low, and we start back into the follicular phase, and the cycle starts back all over again.